For more on this, we've reached Jody Koborinsky. She's a longtime activist and she's speaking at the event in Toronto. We reached her by Skype where she is marching with the crowd today. So Jody, tell me about the event you're at right now. Thanks for having us on. Today we are at the March Against Monsanto in Toronto. We have about 1,500 people on the streets right now. We're marching down to Christy Pitts Park where there's been a non-GMO fest uh, food to fork celebration organized where people can uh, sample organic food, learn a little bit more from some of our keynote speakers. And what's your concern with GMOs? Our main concern with GMOs is that it is an unregulated experiment on the planet. We understand that the regulatory system as it is designed and executed today is inadequate to protect Canadians. We, we have reason to believe that there are concerns about GMOs and the main one that we're focusing on this year is the increased use of pesticides and herbicides that are a result. It's a broken promise from the companies that promote this technology. Now some groups though, some groups are pro-GMO because they say it actually helps make crops more resistant to disease, it helps eliminate the need for pesticides. What do you say to those arguments? Well, we hear that that's the, uh, those are the promises that the biotech industry has been funding themselves on for the past 20 years. But you can go to the Canadian Biotech Action Network website where they're releasing five reports this year on the state of GMOs in the first 20 years. And in it, we have a damning report released last week that shows that GMOs have actually been harder on the environment, not easier on the environment. With herbicide tolerance, uh, we get herbicide resistance, which means we have super weeds, weeds that are no longer killed by the pesticides, and farmers are now having to reach for even more dangerous pesticides and stacking them on top of each other. It's unacceptable. Now, a, a lot of processed foods in Canada already contain some GMO ingredients, and the GMO process, in some cases, adds nutritional value to these foods. So, isn't that a good thing? How is that? Which which of the GMOs on the market today have a genetic modification for nutrition? Not a single one. 95% of GMOs on the market today are gen genetically modified to either produce a pesticide in BT or to be drenched in a pesticide in the form of glyphosate or Roundup, which is Monsanto's version of the product. So we don't have any GMOs that do anything about nutrition. The whole point of GMOs right now is to sell more chemicals to the chemical companies who make them. Now Canada already adds labels to GMO products that, that, they ship, that we ship to Europe where GMO labeling is mandatory. What would you like That's the right. Canadian government to do? Well, first of all, we'd like to see a little bit of transparency. The least the government could do is demand labeling for the products of genetic modification. We would also like the government to regulate these uh, GMOs, all novel foods, whether it's mutagenesis or these more uh, novel treatments, so that we can assure Canadians that the food system is safe. We've seen from the Royal Canada Society in 2001, our leading scientists made a number of recommendations the government could implement to provide Canadians with a sense of safety about this technology, and they all have been ignored. Uh, Monsanto, as you know, is a corporate behemoth. How tough of a fight and how tough of a challenge is it taking on a corporation like that? Well, let's not kid ourselves. This is a David and Goliath battle. But we're inspired by the work of Gandhi and other freedom fighters around the globe who faced similar struggles against um, structures that were beyond them. But we know that when each and every person stands up and demands the food system we want, we get that much closer to achieving it.